first we need to start our servers so the backend server will use clj with the alias of run and then yarn start for our front end dev server and then once that's ready we can go to localhost 4200 and this is where we left off so i think what we want to do is to get the data here and start by creating components to display the data so we already have the get request here in our comment block we're just going to want to move this up until inside of our app and if you're familiar with react we're going to want to do this with the hooks and helix gives us a interface to do though inside of helix hooks and we'll just alias it as hooks we can call use effect from hooks the first argument we can use as once and this will define the dependency array and helix gives us some keywords that we can use in this case once will call this effect only when the app renders the second argument is going to be what we actually want to do and we're going to copy the get block here and paste it inside right now it's just going to log out the response from our server and i believe i made a little typo here this should be dev slash afterload and all the afterload macro does is that every time we save our code it'll update in our browser so this in effect should update our browser if we spelled hooks correctly so hooks here should be plural and now things should be working as correct we'll open up the console to see our log which gives us the object and this is giving us the javascript object and not the eh that'll be fine for now before we move on it'd be a good idea to actually store this response somewhere and for that we'll add a let block we'll move this ending parentheses to the very outside of the function so that we can have a closure inside of closure which is not very helpful in terms of phrasing but this is a place where we could store temporary variables and the one that we're going to be concerned with is going to be the use state hook from react where we could have state and set state this is inside of a list because we're actually destructuring but we can now use the set state here to store the response into the state variable that's given and just to show that this is taking place we could also log out the state on each render before the component so on a refresh the initial state is going to be null which is the translation of nil or no list into javascript and then after the effect takes place we'll store the list of response into the state and here you can see that we have the two contacts that's stored in our backend database we have kelvin and we also have mary sue now we can start working on the other components to actually consume this data and as you can see there's a nav component already created up here i actually want to create a subdirectory called components inside of our front end code a more react style architecture where each component will have its own file so the first one is going to be nav.cljs and we're going to move our nav component there and then the next component that we're going to work on is the contact list and it's important here to name the file with an underscore and not a dash because once again closure is hosted inside of java and java can't understand kebab case names so let's just cut and paste this nav and move it into the nav file that we created and to make everything work we're going to need the namespace which is contacts.components.nav and then we also need to identify all of our imports so def and c and then all of helix dom named as d and then back in core now that nav is missing we're going to need to import our nav component back in here so we'll reference the components namespace and this one is just going to be nav where we'll specifically just get the nav component all right now let's open up contact list and we'll define the namespace and this time we're using a dash because inside of closure the underscores are translated to dashes but we're going to need to import the same libraries that we've been using which is helix core and helix dom so that we can define the contact list component we could add a simple contact list works here just to make sure that this is working as expected and i'm using the fragment syntax here so let's grab that as well inside of core we can import the contact list and then we'll render it inside of the app and i'm going to wrap it inside of div for some styling purposes we'll just add the class name here for container and padding top but our app now should say contact list works now is the time for us to actually pass in the state of all the contact list and we do so by adding a map here inside of the map the property name is going to be contacts where the value is going to be the state 
Now to get access to those props, we can use this argument list and destructure it with the keys syntax, which takes a list and we're going to define each prop that we want. And right now we only need contact. And with those contacts, we'll render a unordered list as well as a list item for each contact. And this is where we can use a map function. Specifically, I'm going to use map indexed, which needs a function and we'll get back to that. But the second argument is going to be the context that comes from the props. Now inside of the lambda function, map index gives us the arguments of the index as the first value and then the individual item as a second argument. And let's just put these on new lines so it's a little easier to read. But we'll have a list item and let's just do the first name of the contact. And the reason why we need the index is because it React expects each array of rendered items to have a key and we'll just use the index for now. So in our app, we'll have both Mary and Kelvin. And the reason why I did it like this is so that we can have a subcomponent called contact list item that takes the props of a contact and then we can expand the list item. So later down the road, we can style it with something like a div inside and I'm going to store the actual values inside of a paragraph tag. And I'm gonna want both the first name and the last name, and we can concatenate both of those values using the string function. So this will be first name of the contact. We'll add a space in between the names, and then the last name of the contact. Then we'll update the lambda function here to instead of doing a raw list item, we can use the component. So to replace this, we're gonna need the dollar sign macro once again the name of the component that we're rendering. And then for the props, we'll still need the key for React to work as intended. But now we also need to pass in the contact. And also don't forget to import your dollar sign macro. And let's take a look. There's our list. We have both Kelvin and Mary Sue. And it's formatted with the space in between the first name and the last name as we intended. Now the next step is to create the contact form and display. And that's gonna be a little bit more involved. I went ahead and added the appropriate boilerplate for the contact form. Let's make sure that we add it to our core.clj. And I'm going to add it right here underneath. So contact form. This time we only want one contact. And I'll use the first function. So we only get the first item of the state. But this may present a problem in case there's nothing in the list. So what I'll do is add an if here where we'll render a paragraph saying loading if there's nothing inside the state. And then the condition is gonna be pretty simple. We'll just add state here. And the state is empty, it'll be falsy. So we don't need to worry about that. All right, back to the contact form. Now I'm gonna want two subcomponents that makes up the contact form. It's gonna be the contact display and the contact edit. And then we can toggle between the two views by using a, a Boolean state. We'll just call it edit. And here we can determine it using an if as well. So if edit is true, we'll render the contact edit. And then if it's false, we'll render the display component. Here we'll also pass down the prop of contact to both of the components, which means we'll need to destructure inside of both of those component views. And for debugging purposes, we'll add a button with an on click handler. And the anonymous function is just gonna call set edit. And we're gonna pass the negation, so not what's currently in edit. So if it's false, it'll turn to true. And if it's true, it'll turn to false. And there's a shorthand enclosure for anonymous functions with zero or one arguments. And that's just to wrap it in a, in a hash sign instead of the function form. We can test it out by adding some text so we know that the two components are actually separate. And let's go to the browser and click that button. Or we can see a warning saying that I forgot to import the contact form. So we'll go ahead and do that. It's a good thing that we saw that warning. And now, and now we get a new error saying the hooks is not defined. And that is because we forgot to import that as well. Now it should work. All right, and there's our button, which we can click and we get display and edit. Okay, let's fill it out now. Display is gonna be the easy part, so we can do that first. We'll do the same thing where we do a map index which means it would be a good idea to make another subcomponent. This one is going to be contact display item, but this time for the props, instead of getting the whole contact, let's grab the label and value and render it inside of a paragraph and render it inside of a paragraph. So the label is going to be bold inside of a strong and then followed by the value. 
So this awaits where we can say first name in bold, colon, and then the actual name. So our mapping function is going to look a little like this. We'll render the contact. Hmm. Now that I think about it, instead of mapping through the contact, because right now contact is a map and not a list, we can add a def here, which will be the list of each of the labels. And that's what we're going to map through. So this way, the V here is going to refer to each of the things saying first name, last name, and email. And that'll be the labels for each display item. So when we render each contact display item, the label here is going to be the value given to us by the map function. And then for value, we need to get from our contact the keyword version of these strings. And that's going to be not too hard because closure gives us a keyword function that will convert a string into a keyword. So here we'll provide V for that keyword. And then as always, we'll need to add a React key and that'll be our index. But now everything is being rendered kind of correctly. We do want to format this to be a little more human readable. So we'll remove the underscore, maybe capitalize things. And to do that, we can add a little helper function here where we can convert the string to a label. Okay, so let's walk through this. So using the string function, we're going to concatenate the colon and space at the end of the string. But then for the string itself, I'm using a thread first. So first we'll call string.replace. And with the thread first macro, the S will basically go here. But this is going to replace all the underscores with spaces. And then after that's done, it's going to capitalize the entire string. And then we'll need to wrap the label with make label string. And that should fix our display issue. So now these are the strings that we get. And I kind of don't like having these two defs in here. So I'm going to add it to a utils.cljs file in the root of our namespace. And here we can also shorten the closure.string library by importing it and just prefer replace and capitalize. So then we can get rid of this and this prefix. Make sure you spell require correctly and that'll do that. And then we'll want to import these two back into contact form for everything to work. So that'll be contacts.utils to refer the form fields as well as make label string. So that was a little bit of refactoring. So this is working correctly. Now if we toggle, we need to actually create the form. All right, um, first, I know that we're going to want a let here for state, where the initial value is going to be the contact that comes in from props. And instead of a paragraph, this is going to be a form. But I think it'll be easier to start with each individual form field, which I'm going to call as the edit item. The props here is going to be the label and value, just like the display item but I'm also going to want an on change method. The label is going to go into a label HTML element where we can make use of the make label string that we used earlier. And this time we could add a map here for the HTML for attribute, which means the ID of the input element is going to have to match. So we'll add that here as well. The value of the input is going to come from the edit item props and then on change is going to call the method that we pass into it. So the edit item is going to be straightforward. However, the form itself is going to be a bit more complex. We can follow the same pattern that we've been using with the map index. And the list that we're mapping over is going to be the form fields that we defined. Inside the mapping function, label, value, and key is going to be the same as what we did with the display items. However, now we need to take into account an onChange method. And that's where we're going to call setState. And speaking of states, this contact should be called state as we want to get it from the local form as it were. So the reason why this is going to be complicated is because the state itself is the entire contact, but each edit item only wants to change the form field that it's associated with. So the outer function is going to be a soak. So we'll only have to worry about each field itself, which field we're concerned about is going to be the keyword of V and then the value that comes from the edit item. And this syntax is going to be a bit unfamiliar, but the percent here is going to be the HTML event. And we're using dot dot here, which is a version of the thread first macro, but it allows us to call dot methods in JavaScript. So we'll do event.target.value, which if you're familiar with JavaScript is how you update form fields. And once we get the event value, We'll update the state object with only that event value. And then 
the new state coming back from Ahsoka is going to be added to the set state hook. Hopefully that makes sense and it's clear enough. But in the browser, we can check that and go into our edit version. These are inputs, which may not be obvious because Tailwind has a very strong reset. We'll style this a little later. But here, if we update the state, It'll update accordingly and then it doesn't mutate the global state so when we toggle back we'll still get the full name so we finished the display components the next step would be to do all the actions but because of how messy things can get i actually want to start on adding a mechanism for us to store global state of our application and as a react developer i want to use context for that and that's what we'll do in the next video but as always, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it valuable. And as always, I'll see you all next time.